Some are more explicit than others. Read these curses. One of them says, you're going to eat your kids, basically. Remember that happened? So a woman says, hey, uh, you know, we're starving here. We're under siege warfare. This is the Bible, by the way. Today we eat your kid, then tomorrow we eat my kid. Sound like a good deal? Shake on it. It's the eight. The very last curse. And the Lord, every time you see all caps, that's Yahweh. And Yahweh will bring you back. So you have had to already been to this place in ships to Egypt. Okay, they were in Egypt. They're going back to Egypt. The way the Hebrew sites spin it is Egypt means house of bondage. They're going back into some form of slavery. This is actually talking about the transatlantic slave trade. I promise you should never make again. And there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. That's a modern translation. It's more correct because in the Hebrew it's reflexive, indicating selling yourself, which would be like an indentured servant. That's why it's... I promise you should never make again, and there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. That's a modern translation. It's more correct because in the Hebrew it's reflexive, indicating selling yourself, which would be like an indentured servant. That's why it's... The KJV says you'll be sold. There'll be no buyer. So if a person went more with that interpretation, which they usually do, okay, then if it says there's no buyer, that doesn't fit the transatlantic slave trade. Then if it says there is no buyer, that doesn't fit the transatlantic slave trade. Then if it says there is no buyer, that doesn't fit the transatlantic slave trade. They kind of make it metaphorical, not like a purchase situation. They kind of make it metaphorical, not like a purchase situation. And, and they'll, they'll give you all this history on slavery, and it only goes back to the 16th and the 17th century. The Ashkenazi Khazars those who say they are Jews and are not are the ones that marketed it and the regal Negro nomads exiled from the kingdom of Judah were the main recipients of it at the hands of the indigenous black Africans. 1907. This is a horrifying photo. It is a picture of a British sailor removing the shackles on a slave's ankle in 1907. In order to keep the slaves in line during the journey from Africa, they had to keep them in shackles. This, they had to keep them in shackles. When you first look at this photo, you wouldn't know that the men are slaves judging by the way they are dressed. The major clue is when you look down at their feet and you see they have no shoes on. In the 1860s, slaves were not allowed to wear shoes. Seeing photos of adult slaves is bad enough, but seeing child slaves is completely heartbreaking. Number 4. The African Slave Ship Of all the photos of slavery from the past that will horrify you, this is possibly the worst. Back in slave days, ships went to Africa and they pulled these poor people from their homes to put them on ships and bring them overseas to be slaves. The number of Africans on the ship is heartbreaking. Number 8. The Worst Men in the World This is a photo of three Arabian slave dealers. Okay, wow. <laughs> First and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakodash. Okay? Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone of whom I learn from daily. And a healthy shalom to the brothers that are out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. Please excuse my voice. It's a little early in the morning, but wow. Really? All right. Easy work. Light work. You know, again, as you as you can see, I got that video from, you know, from the Eldo Karat. This is on Baltimore, man. <laughs> uh, this devil's finished, man. He's completely finished. You know, um, scripture comes to mind. Your enemies will not be able to resist nor gainsay. Matter of fact, let, yeah, let's just get this first. I'll get that later. This is 1 Corinthians. Easy, easy, light work. Easy, light work. Now, we all know, you know, we all know, and it's very simple, and it's very clear that the curses in Deuteronomy 28 chapter was talking about us. That's northern and southern kingdom, period, point blank. It's an easy one. Everybody knows it. Okay? You got this thing called a uh, cognitive dissonance. Now you can believe what you want to believe, but in the end it shall come true. It, hey, although it Terry, wait for it. See? This is first Corinthians 14 and verse 33. For the most high is not the author of confusion, but of peace 
and in all the churches of the saints. Again, who who are the saints? This is a uh, <laughs> oh boy, this is just light work. I got a couple scriptures and I close it out. This is Joel three and verse three. Now listen closely. And they have cast lots. What does that mean? Cast lots. That means auction blocks. <laughs> That's auction blocks. Okay. So, you know, he saw fit to go into, uh, which was the newer version. Anyway, he said this was, uh, uh, what, what did he say? Um, yeah, he went, he, he the, the version he was reading, that's the newer, uh, translation. That's the newer version. Now, what people do, you know, sold themselves as a whole people. Okay. You know, Tyree and Zidon, well, Hamites, they knew who they were selling. And at the end of that video, what did it say? What did it say? Arabian slave sellers. That's Ishmael. You see that? That's Ishmael, man. Ishmael, Ham. See, they all had a part in this. This is Joel 3, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot. What does that mean? What is a harlot? A whore. Given a boy for a harlot. And that, that, what, is that, hey, what does that let you know? All the pedophilia. That's the M.O. of Esau. Buck breaking. Hello. And they claim it was, uh, uh, you know, buck breaking was uh, a tactic to, and it was. Okay, I'll get on with the scriptures, but Buck Becking was a tactic to uh, show dominance over over the male and over the, you know, the entire family. But in the process, what is that? Sodomy. Huh? You see that? So let's read this again from the top. You understand that it's in his nature to be a uh, uh, a uh, doing things that are unseemly. He's he's this. This man is disgusting. And woman. They do all kinds of things with animals. That's why he said, I disdain to sit with the flock of my dogs. <clears throat> we know these people are absolutely backwards and disgusting. <laughs> wow, vocab. This is just it's easy work, man. Joel 3, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have sold a boy for a harlot. And sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Who's this speaking about? Well, let's keep reading. <laughs> yay. Have, uh, yay. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, Hamites, and all the coast of Palestine, Hamites? Okay, will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Okay, and look at look at those Hamites over there now, man. They uh, doo doo eating, you know. Rubbing feces on themselves, mud hut, you know, and, and uh, <clears throat> and they and you know that continent of Africa is abundant in resources. You see, plates in their lips, all kinds of madness. <laughs> Verse five. Let's read this. What does this say? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples, my goodly and pleasant things. See that? Let's keep reading. And the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. Did, 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 huh? Let's read it again. The children also of Judah, southern kingdom, and the children of Jerusalem, northern kingdom, all 12 tribes, have ye sold unto the Grecians, Edomites, that ye might remove them far from their border? Wait a minute, vocab. Hold on now. Did he say we would sell ourselves and nobody would? Nobody's gonna purchase us? As a matter of fact, that's an oxymoron right there. It doesn't even make any sense. That word "buy" goes into redeem, help, fix, deliver. OK. <laughs> oh, man, it's easy work, man. It's totally easy. OK. And I hope I hope this is an edifying lesson. Verse seven. 
Behold, I will raise them out of the out of the place where ye have sold them. What did that say? Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them and, and will return your recompense upon your own head. You know what that means? That means you're going to get paid back for the things that you've done upon this earth and upon to, uh, to the children of Israel. Where? In the land of the north. Right here. See that? Oh, boy. All right. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Salakia. Again, it's early in the morning. My voice is all messed up. It wouldn't let me go there. Let's go here. Revelation 11 and verse 8. Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the, in the street of the great city, which is spiritually which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Hey, now they ought to put it in the clip right there. Egypt is synonymous with bondage, isn't it? Isn't it? That's what the scripture says. You see that? Egypt is synonymous with bondage. So let's read it again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, Babylon, which is spiritually called Sodom. Why? I was just briefly explaining that before. Didn't they sell a boy for a harlot? Hmm. And the Grecians, the Edomites who bought them, didn't, didn't they commit all kinds of atrocities, buck breaking? You know, hey, amongst all kinds of other, you know, uh, uh, egregious acts. Disgusting. Okay. And Egypt, bondage, where also our Lord was crucified. How so? All right. How so? Everywhere you go, if you hear that word, if you hear Jesus, first thing you think of is a stringy haired white, is a stringy haired white boy. And, you know, and it was a real dude, <clears throat> son of Pope Alexander VI. Cesare Borgia, right? And we all back in our lot right now. Okay, let's keep going. And they, verse 9, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves three days and a half. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. You see that? And that's after they were sold. We were sold. Purchased. As what? Slaves. Via what? Ships. Hello. Yoke of iron. Shackles. <laughs> oh, boy. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets, northern and southern kingdom, tormented them that dwell on the earth. And that how are we tormenting them? We speak in a proverb through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the words that are coming out of our mouth, mouth come directly from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. That's why they're getting burned up. That is precisely why they cannot resist nor gainsay. You see? Verse 11. And after three days and a half, 350 years, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, A great and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now, that's exactly what's going on with, uh, uh, with that damn devil vocab right there. He cannot resist nor gainsay. He can't Resist, nor gainsay. Great fear has fallen upon them. These words are burning their ass up. Didn't the scripture say they sharpened any any two-edged sword? Right? They what? They are sharpened any two-edged sword. You know, matter of fact, Slakia. Hmm. I'm gonna try to make that work. There we go. All right.
Yep. I said, I was going to get it. I'll go ahead and get it now. All right. This is Luke 21, verse 15, red letters. You have a shot speaking. <clears throat> so lock you. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries, uh-oh, adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Same thing happened. Uh, you know, it happens all the time on, you know, on the highways and byways all over these epistles every day. They can't stay away. They can't stay away. They can't resist, nor can they gainsay, man. All right? Like that, uh, like that demon-possessed legion uh, dude uh, that, uh, that was at the uh, apostles' camp. He was so blinded he couldn't get it. But, but you know what? He stayed for almost damn near three hours. Why? Because he could not resist. <laughs> He couldn't resist, man. And that's what's going on with old uh, Vo Crab Malone, okay? All right, so let's go back here. Let's go here. Psalms 73. Uh, Salaki, I may want to go back. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. They sure speak loftily when it, concerning oppression, man. They're not in trouble as other men, right? Psalm 73 and verse 5. They are not in trouble. Is that where I want to go? Yep, that's just fine. Psalm 73 and verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. You see? All right. I mean, that's plain and simple right there. Verse 6. Therefore, pride can pass them about as a chain. Violence. Cover at them as a garment and everything everywhere they go and everything they do has something to do with some damn violence. OK. You know, everywhere. Uh, if you uh, how does the scripture said, if you be in adversity, you'll you'll find him beside you. Something to the effect of that, you know, and it, uh, if any of you brothers want to put that on the comment board, please do it. The scripture alludes me right now. <laughs> If thou find adversity, you'll find him sitting beside you first. Something like that of the effect. All right. Verse seven. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Did they not get the fatness of the earth? Who? Esau Edom. Wasn't that his blessing? One of his blessings? It sure was. The sword, the dew of heaven. See that? <laughs> it's pretty simple. Scripture said he'd be, he's going to be a liar from birth. <clears throat> See that? And that's 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 exactly what vocab just did. Straight up lied. Try to fast try to fast speak it. And that's something else I've noticed these damn uh, Christianity does. These Christians do. They try to come up real fast. See, I got him. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish, man? The scripture said they are they are uh, the accuser of the brethren, man. Why are you not going up against the 1948ers? Huh? Not one video has he ever made about a damn Christian. About these uh, 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 Christianity terrorism. In the name of Christianity. In the name of uh, uh, Christianity, man. All kinds of atrocities and things have been done in the name of Christianity. Lynchings. Uh, in wars. Crusades. <laughs> Verse seven, their eyes stand out with fatness and they ha and they have more than heart could wish. It isn't that right. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Well, that's what vocab just did. You see that? That's what exactly what he just did. <laughs> you were reading the new version there. Uh, you know, vocab. I'm start calling him a bow crab. Verse nine, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. <laughs> oh, man. They, uh, Esau eat them is finished, man. Bunch of damn devils. Okay. This is Psalms three and verse seven. Arise. Oh, Yahweh, save me. Oh, my power. Who's that? Who's that talking? Who, who's speaking? The Israelites. 
You know? I mean, who's it speaking of? Uh, 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 arise, oh, Yahweh, save me. Save, save us. What the hell do these other nations need to be saved from? From what? <laughs> oh, my power, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord Yahweh. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salah. Thy what? Thy people. The Israelites, the 12 tribes, man. Okay. Included in that is the speckled birds. Going to come looking like every other nation. And that's a fact. Get over it, you B.O.I.s. <clears throat> Get over it, you, you, you simps. You little, uh, you got people like, you got, th you got this. And don't know, no, King David was ruddy. I mean, slock you. King David was red, just like Esau. So you ninjas, man, you got to go. You got to go. Jeremiah 50 and verse 33. See, it's, it's people like that would be in league. And he's got uh, his, uh, his cronies, his motley crew, vocab. He's got his motley crew, okay? A bunch of weak-ass ninjas that don't know the Bible for nothing. It's clear to see he's been set up by somebody. I believe he said it his own uh, agent riser, right? He said it his own damn self. But see, this is light work. It's just light. Jeremiah 50, verse 33. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives, all that did what took them captives, held them fast. They refused to let them go. Hmm. All that took them, held them fast. They refused to let them go. Didn't, didn't Tyre and Zidon, didn't the Hamites uh, sell the Israelites to the Grecians, to the Edomites? Did, did the scripture not just say that? Isn't that in the history books? But they're, they're, they're so busy trying to erase this. Again, you know what they're teaching in school now, right? That it was an indentured servitude. Hmm. You know? But then our videos get taken down when we play a little clip of Amistad. <laughs> they got a whole lot to pay for, man. It's madness. They've got a whole lot to pay for. Let's go here. Baruch. What, is, what does this say? Baruch 3 verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Thou, who scattered us? Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. He scattered us to the four winds of the earth. Again, that's why we're going to come looking like a speckled bird. Didn't it say in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. <laughs> Baruch 3 verse 8, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Didn't, that, didn't the scripture before say they refused to let us go? Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Hmm. Where's that written? In Deuteronomy 28 chapter. And to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. Now we can go back to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15 and read that. 14, 15, 16. It's right there in the scriptures. Didn't he say, blesses he that readeth? Hmm. Baruch 2 and verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me. Why? Let's go back. No, I'll stay right there. Try not to make this too long. Baruch 2 and verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people, hard headed men. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Uh oh. Didn't that happen after three days and a half here in what? Babylon, the land of the north. Whether we were sold to the Grecians, hmm, and got and got put on ships back and forth. That's why they called it the Triangle. You see, okay, light work. 
But they, they sold their sales, but nobody, but nobody bought them. And, and that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> you damn liars, man. <laughs> this is Psalm 58, verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Same spirit in the garden that beguiled Eve. And yet this day is still the same dynamic. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the uh, to the uh, voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. But, uh, but hold on now. Break their, verse 6, break their teeth, O, o God. In their mouth, break the great teeth of the young lions, O Yahweh. Excuse me. Let them melt away as waters which runneth, which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, boom, boom, boom. Let them be as cut in pieces. See that? It's a recompense for that. Now, let's go here. Indentured, I typed in, indentured servant definition. Immediately, what do you have here? What looks to be like a bunch of Edomites. Hmm. I wonder why, because indentured servitude and slavery is two completely different things. Let's read about it. Let's go. All right. Indentured servitude refers to a contract. It wasn't a contract when we uh, were uh, forcefully beaten, stacked up like sardines and brought uh, to and fro on with ships. That wasn't a contract between two individuals in which one person worked not for money, but to repay an indenture or a loan. <laughs> oh boy, scripture! What does scripture say? We we are subject to payments. <laughs> oh boy, this is easy work. Within a set time period, indentured servitude was a popular was popular in the United States in the 1600s. As individuals, mainly European immigrants, you know, and, and uh, which which uh, we are the original Europeans in the first place. Another thing they won't tell you in that clip. And it starts at the 1400s. Uh, you mean to tell me uh, uh, so-called so-called black people, <laughs> the regal house of Judah. The southern kingdom. All Judah's history starts in. The 1400s. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. European immigrants. I'm just going to read it. Worked in exchange for the price of passage to America. Passage to America. Not Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And no, we did not offer ourselves up for sale either. Didn't it say Tyre and Zidon, the Hamites? Sold them to the Grecians, sold them, <laughs> and no man shall buy you. Come on, man, get it together, vocab. This is easy work, simple and plain. And then, if you go back to it, and even and even if you go back to it, those are the curses that are the, uh, that were written about the uh, the Israelites. Well, what other nation could be even possibly re remotely that be talking about? I'll wait. That's a, that's a damn good question. Well, who's that talking about? Okay. Now you, hey, you got some people uh, in the land of Israel right now that calling themselves Israelis. Did that happen to them? Did they ever offer? Now, hold on now. Wait a minute. Did they offer themselves up? No. <laughs> See that? See, put the same questions on the people who are claiming that they are Israelites. Do that. I'll wait. That's another that's another question. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's what indentured servitude is. Let's go here. Deuteronomy 28 verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness and thou shalt shall not prosper in thy ways. Black Wall Street, Wilmington, North Carolina, and all kinds of, uh, you know, there's there's many different examples. 
you know, with, uh, with the so-called Southern Kingdom and the Northern Kingdom. It, it, it happened. All this has happened to, uh, to both of us. We're thriving in certain places. And what they do, they brought in the U.S. freaking military and dive bombed the entire the entire city. And then they got the nerve to tell you to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But hey, this is why we stay occupied in prophecy. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 29. And no, we don't want no reparations, man. Our reparations is going to be well beyond anything you look for, as the scripture said. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope at the darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. See that? And no man shall save thee. Hmm. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 7. Now, we could keep going in Deuteronomy. We could just read the whole thing. Deuteronomy 30, verse 7. And the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. And, and, and do they not speak loftily concerning oppression? Do they not still persecute us? Hmm? Again, stay in Occupy and prophecies. Digital currency getting ready to hit the street. Hmm? MOTBs floating around. Third woe is getting ready to happen. All these prophecies are popping off. The house of David is being built. Hmm? <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> verse, uh, let's see. Deut uh, yeah, I went back to Deuteronomy here. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore, Slocky, I'm not sure what that's all about right there. Anyway, uh, therefore shall thy serve thine enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall send against thee. Why, Lord? Because we went off. And all this is speaking about the Israelites. Are we not serving thine enemy still to this day? We are yet this day in our captivity. <laughs> shall, whether, whether the Lord shall send against thee. Why? Because he's a great father. You see that right there? It's because he's a great father. Does he not chastise the ones he loves? Joel 2 and verse 27, what did that say? I'm in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God and none else. Who And shall sit against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. See that? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. He took it off, and and, and uh, and uh, you know, we were we, we were docile. And hey, and this happened. This happened to northern and southern kingdom. That's one of the things that a whole lot of people won't teach. The same thing happened. We're we both been oppressed together. Yoke of iron. All right, so what I did right there is I typed in yoke of iron. You know, many brothers have done it, but it, hey, look, there you have it right there. Even look, what, even the, the caveman news network knows it. And that's just mockery. You know, that's just mockery. Again, easy work. Let's go on down. Look at this. Shackles, yoke of iron. Ooh, what do we have here? Our history is in the Bible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Northern and Southern Kingdom, right? See, that's Gad and Judah right there. Unbelievable. All right. Look at that. Packed in like sardines. I was, I was speaking of before. What's this? You know, and, and you know what? That's damn right. That's absolutely correct. Okay. <laughs> there you have it. It's right there in front of your eyes, man. Packed in like sardines, right? There's, there you have it right there. Let's read this. Exodus 21, verse 16. And he, mm, what does that say? And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or, see, he, he that stilleth a man and selleth him. Didn't uh, 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 Ishmael, Ham, 
Now, all these nations had a part. He that stealeth a man and selleth, uh, and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand. Baruch 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. He shall surely be put to death. You see that vocab? You see that, you Edomites, Idumia? Hmm? You Babylonians? You see? He shall surely be put to death. Now, when he comes back, are, are we going to be found? Hmm. Found? See that? Let's read this. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. What does this say? Okay. Now, I pulled this up. Let's read this. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Listen to what it says. And it stops short, very short. Abolished slavery in the United States. And that's it. And it says, let's see, what is this? Resource library. Um, grades six through eight. But before that, they were teaching that it was uh, 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 what indentured servitude. Social studies, United States history. And then they got to show this, right? Cotton, a shack, hmm. a uh, couple at a ca a couple a couple at a cabin in eighteen nineteen like uh, like it was just oh they were just having a good time. The Thirteenth Amendment ended enslavement in the United States. Here is a formerly enslaved African American, <laughs> unbelievable couple sh couple shown. Uh, at their cabin in 1890s Like everything was uh, peachy and creamy Oh they were just having a good old time Okay Well they stopped way short See this is what they're teaching the children right here This is what they're teaching the children Abraham Lincoln got rid of it But what did he say Let, Let's actually read what the 13th amendment says 13th amendment Section 1 Neither slavery or involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for a crime. So that means slavery still exists. <laughs> the Bible is infallible. Wherefore, the, uh, the party shall have been uh, duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. <laughs> oh man and uh, don't we have this thing called the industrial complex the uh prison industrial complex you see that where what it was 80 to 90 percent of of all those prisoners 80 to 90 percent of the prisoners on earth are right here in babylon and 80 to 90 percent of them i believe are northern and southern kingdom well, isn't that just a coincidence? Section two, Congress. I mean, unbelievable, right? Again, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity vocab. You can't resist or gainsay. You can't do it. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Mischief by law. That they have prescribed. See? <laughs> Isaiah 42 and verse 22 But this people Robbed and spoiled They are all of them snared in holes They are all hid in prison houses They are for a prey And none delivereth No man shall buy thee For a spoil And none saith restore This is precisely why Yahweh is going to come back and gather up his wheat into his barn and burn the tares. See that? Isaiah 42 verse 2. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God our power. You know, Yahweh. Salakia. He that created the heavens and stretched them out he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it he that giveth uh, that breath unto the people upon it a spirit to them that walketh that walk therein 
I, the Lord, Yahweh, have called thee in righteousness and will, and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Woo! See that? Okay. Isaiah 62 and verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which is a people before it's a place, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord Yahweh, keep not silent. See? And that's what we're doing. And that's why that's precisely why they cannot resist. They can't resist the, all these demonic spirits, man. You can see it. I know you brothers know exactly what I'm talking about. You can see them. See, we're ancient spirits and they know it. Okay? And they hate us. But we're going to rule over them again. <clears throat> okay? It's going to happen, man. Verse 7. And give him no rest until he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You see that? Ooh, that's beautiful. Verse 8. The Lord Yahweh have sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine for thee, uh, for thee, which thou hast labored. All right. So, you know, I, I guess I'll leave it right there. Vocab. It's easy work. It's easy work. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Kwam Yasharala, DTA and Wa Abayaba Ball. Boom. Shalom.